All right, so I'm on my way to Canada, the Dakar Rally. It's a um, Overland GPS rally. Um, basically, in short, they give you a GPS file, much like a lot of the racing, and you follow the file. Those who follow the file the most accurately wins. There's numerous classes. Uh, of course, I signed up for the, the highest class, the gold class. So we'll have roughly 20 to 24 hours to go 500 kilometers, which is probably give or take 300, 330 miles or something like that. Um, I'm up here in northern New York, right near Watertown. Stopped on the side of the exit ramp, put some fuel in my truck because I carry a transfer tank. Uh, look in the trailer, check the trailer out, make sure everything's good. And a port broke on the Can-Am. Um, kind of an odd deal. Maybe it's how I had it strapped. Had it strapped a little overly tight because I get tired of stuff hopping around. And it broke, broken, broken like a little pin. Um, not a big deal. So I get fuel, start searching around. Um, I camped right there last night. That's the county works office um, that here in Adams where they uh, take care of all the county roads. Met the supervisor over there. We talked dirt track. Awesome, awesome, super nice guy. Got a hold of a uh, company out in Utah that makes the pins. Uh, those guys, they overnight shipped them to the Can-Am dealer, which is right over there. It's like, cool, no big deal. Roll over there this morning, pick up pins, overnight shipping, all that kind of stuff. Go in the trailer, pins don't fit. Uh, two different sizes and I ordered the wrong size. Okay, so my fault. So I'm here at this machine shop and hydraulic shop um, they've got machining materials, uh, tools and such. So I take the pins inside, take the ham joints in there and say, hey, can you spin these down to fit the ham joints? They're like, okay, when do you wanna, when you need them done? I was like, well, I'm on my way to Canada right now. So I need to be there this evening. He's like, oh, okay. I was like, you know, just charge me what, he, what you gotta charge. That's fine, I'll, I'll pay for it. I'm not asking for free. I just I kinda need to be moving right along. So uh, he's like, all right, well, let me go back there and talk to the machinist. Machinist says, yeah, yeah, we can do that. That's not very big. We're taking off like a couple millimeters, not huge. We can make that work, no big deal. Um, I'll do it at no cost. Just go down to the pizzeria and get us some pizzas. <laughs> so I take truck and trailer and everything, local pizzeria, buy them four pizzas, bring them back in here. Um, they're pumped. I'm pumped. So now we're gonna put the pins back in the machine and get back on the road. Oh, the, the Dakar Rally saga continues. All right, we made it to the driver's meeting. Listen to it, it's pretty intimidating. There's a lot of stuff going on. Gas, water crossings, moose. Uh, I mean, you pick it, they got it. We got Lee, the guy putting it all on. And Super Greg here, he won it last year. He's got some inside of like, Okay, it's harder than what they say, but it's not as hard as what they say. I really don't know what to understand. <laughs> <laughs> and um, what is the thing you, um, they say penalized up here. Oh. The first three times I was like, oh, oh. And then I was like, no, that's just how they talk. It's penalized. So, it's like, so, so give me your insight right quick on what yeah. I should expect. Yeah, um, a lot of fuckery. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. If we, I don't know if we could, that. Yeah. We'll have to bleep that part out. Oh, sorry, mom. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, no. You're gonna expect water, mud, roots, rocks, hill climbs, opportunities to roll the machine, flip the machine over, winch, uh, not winch. Um, like it, it's an assortment of trail out there. I mean, the Canadian Shield's pretty aggressive. Yeah. It's really wild. Yeah, it's nothing like Baja. That's for sure. <laughs> well, I'm all about trails of cross country, a whole country by GPS and trail. So I understand that part. Yeah. I like the idea that it's not a race, but it, it does have time limits. Yeah. It can't yeah. be overly slow. I get that. That's perfectly cool. Yeah, it's like um, it's, it's safety basically. I got a little paranoid back there because you said open gravel roads. You shouldn't speed, but you should speed. I was, I was a little. You have to interpret it a little bit. I was a little questioned <laughs> on that. So I'm just going to take it at my own mercy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, follow the rules of the road, but at the same time, you know, we all find ourselves going down the highway at 100 and something, 
That's, for, that's, uh, kilometers. For the Americans, that's kilometers. That's kilometers, not miles per hour. 65, 70, 75, uh, okay. that type of stuff. Yeah. So. so here we're going to go to the driver's meeting. We got all that. We're going to get everything dialed in with these little GPS and go through tech and all that kind of stuff. And here we go. Rally, what is it, Connex or? Rallyconnects.com. Connex. And what is this called? The Dacre, the longest day rally. The Dacre. I've kept saying Dakar, but Never that's overseen. Yeah, yeah. Never as long, give up. yeah. Don't give up. <laughs> Going to be a good time. All right, so here's the Canon MX3 I brought, 64 inch um, X3 DS. 200 horsepower, but base model. I put bypass shots on it that I already had. Wheels, tires, wrap, you know, cool things like that. Um, those are all the side by sides. Two rows of them. This is all for the prolong. All right, so here we are. It's Friday, Dakar Rally. Uh, they gave the driver's meeting. It's kind of intimidating the way he talks, but talking to some guys, they're like, just, just be patient, do your thing, and it should be fine. Uh, we're all lined up for a prologue, which prologue course is what's going to do qualifying times for your start time for tomorrow morning. So uh, you want to be fast, but if you're crazy fast and then not fast in the woods, people are going to catch you. It's not a race. It's purely accuracy and GPS, but uh, we all want to be fairly quick. There are speed limits on the gravel road such as that. So you got to be just conscious of that uh, and making your machine get to the end. That's the biggest thing. So yeah, it should be a good time. My co-driver will be here tonight, Jack. Um, so we're gonna prologue this little pre-run course and then we're gonna do a qualifying time later in the day. That time we'll, we do, we'll determine where we start. Uh, ideally, I don't wanna start up front. A lot of people up here running windshields. Uh, windshields are nice to keep stuff out of your face, but they also get dirty and you got to get them clean uh, they said there's a lot of sticks and trees and bugs um, so if you're not first you don't have to deal with that if you're first then you have to deal with that so I think uh, starting within the top top percentage would be good and of course people are gonna he said people he said the, the, the staff can't even help you here they um, you have to put up your hand and say I'm done I quit then they'll help you you, they, they can't even tell you how far it is to the next stop, how far it is to gas. It's purely up to you. So that's that's definitely interesting. But if you tell them, hey, I stop them out, then they'll help you. Um, so they want you to be self-sufficient, which is super cool. I'm, I'm all about that kind of stuff. So yeah, this we're all lined up for the prologue. I would say there's... I, I would say there's probably 55 UTVs all together. There's three different classes, basically bronze silver and gold um, gold is the hardest uh, it's 517 kilometers which is 320 miles uh, that's it they have bikes ATVs there's a bike all in four, minutes. four minutes till our prologue sight lap they even have an Argo class the 6x6 Argos how cool is that uh, so yeah, it's truly not a race, but there are time limits. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, like I've said before, you, there are, they do have to have cutoff times to keep it within reason. I think you have 21 hours to finish every checkpoint. There's five checkpoints has a cutoff time. If you don't make it, well, you're just out. And then just heard that the the highway right here had a sinkhole last night. And now the highway's closed further down. So <laughs> welcome to Canada. <laughs> the inside of the Can-Am. Got rugged radio and intercom. Uh, Richard at HPR. Got me quick shipping on that. Belt temp sensor. 360 cam. We'll have a GPS mounted over here for Jack to watch. Uh, plenty of storage. First aid, fire extinguisher, Jack. Um, basically, all the basics you would need, whether racing or trail riding. Uh, that's, that's how we roll. Now we're getting ready for our sight lap here. So yeah, the sight lap is being led by an Argo. So it's a slower pace. We can see the course. The sight lap is, and the prologue is, is pushed out with arrows. Uh, no GPS needed for this, so it's just an arrow course. 
Um, pretty simple. So we'll see what this is all about. So Lee, the main guy that that's part of putting all this on, he said his their prologue course time at a blazing speed was 12 minutes. Um, so it's a pretty long little course. Uh, I don't know how many. They don't do miles up here. They do k's or kilometers. So um, I don't know. Like it'll all be fine. I'm not worried about that kind of stuff whatsoever. Honestly, I think uh, just do what I always do. Good steady course. Of course, we got old sticky to stick horse here. Um, I'm running it window nets. Um, I think they don't require that. The tech inspection here is. Um, pretty basic have headlights tail lights um, a horn is awesome you don't have to have it um, I set it up semi to a race car we've got a horn radios and fire extinguisher and you do have to have a first aid kit you need to have a means to fix a tire they advise you to carry a chainsaw here I have a little Milwaukee chainsaw in my pack uh, tools uh, whatever it takes to kind of be self-sufficient to get yourself back out of the woods whether um, you break down or whether it's too hard or whether whatever whatever you may feel um, It's a big old hole in that turn right there you can mark that um, But yeah Pretty good time so far. Uh, we've made it eighth of a mile and uh, We ain't just now hitting the woods, so we're being led by an Argo super cool um, But not necessarily fast uh, but if we had a water crossing, he's going to do just fine. <laughs> so let's hope for none of those. They said last year there's a water crossing, and from where you enter, you go straight to the sign. If you go off of it, you're veering off the road that's underneath, and you'll swamp out your machine. They said they lost some machines being swamped out. Bikes got swamped out, so they took that section out. They said there are going to be water crossings, you know, not crazy deep, but, you know, semi-deep. But... Yeah, this place is, uh, well, as you can see here, I'm glad I brought a 64. Yeah, this is the glory of a 64 right here, whipping through these trees. Oh, you take this turn a little bit too big, and you'll end up in a lake. Uh, the advantages of a four-seater or carry all your stuff. The disadvantages are uh, you're long. So there's one rule they put in this year. This is new for this year, I believe. Um, everyone that is entered has to run the, pro the prologue um, qualifier, basically, because they've had problems in years past as random draw and sometimes depending on people's skill set um, you might have someone that's just comfortable going slow and might be up front and then they get run down by a little bit faster people and so it causes log jams bottlenecks such as that so you're required to run the prologue that way they can kind of set people as far as their time and, and speed and comfort level fully makes sense so yeah by missing your time or not showing up the prologue um, they start you at the black at the back of the pack so you'll be behind fast people slow people everything and they add two hours to your time which makes it very hard to finish within the time per checkpoint so with that being said um, they're pretty hard on people but they just want the best for people they want everybody to take it serious you know have fun but be respectful for time. Um, big fan of that. That's that's gonna be a eye opener for sure for some people. All right, we've got the Freedom Race lift. Um, super cool because it fits in the trailer, fits under the machine. Bring it out here, pick your machine up. And I'll work on all four corners. Uh, just go across the front end. Check all my bolts, my pins, put mark. Marker on them, 
that way you run a lap, come back, check all the marks. If the marks are still there, nothing shifted, then it's all good. Um, so yeah, that's what we got going on. Uh, the trailer is a massive force. Um, just drinks, bags, parts, snacks, batteries, uh, all that kind of good stuff. Got the Starlink running, so I've got Wi-Fi a little bit. But yeah, here at the uh, Dakar Overland Rally in Canada. That'll be a good time. All right, I went on the uh, prologue, qualifier, whatever. Um, doing good. Putting in a heater, or so I thought. I get in the first field, sweep around some trees. Come in there and thought, well, it's going to push and slide and just throw it in there. And no, it pushed and rolled right on its side to its roof and back to its side again. Um, so, yeah, my driving skills are not that great. I've been driving a 7.2 a lot, so that probably makes a little bit of difference. But it's super grippy out there, too. And I'm probably just not a great driver. So, there it is. Here's the machine. Um, doing a little bit of body work fixing and throwing a radiator in it. This one's got a little bend in it. Um, I really don't want to be out there and something happens, so we'll just start with a fresh one. Here it is. All right, so I got the front end off. This side is what caught everything. Uh, bent the light bar brackets, bent those back, bent the door in. Um, I'm not really sure how to bend that back, but I'm not really worried about it. Of course, this little guy is loose now. Some magical zip ties for the fenders. Spare tire caught a lot of it. A little antenna held up strong. And I'm just fixing the work. I noticed this little thing in the radiator. It's got a slight bend in it. You pull it back. It's got some marks in the fan. Um, I'd rather not take off in that and have an issue when I have a, a spare one sitting right here. So we'll swap them. Nothing's wrong with this. I can just save it as a spare down the trail later on. Uh, so we're going to swap this and then put it all back together. And I'd love to find a pressure washer, but I don't think I'm going to find it. Alright, it's fairly early. Got the trailer unloaded. Got the machine outside. Co-driver Jack, he Jack came in last night. <laughs> he suited up ready. Yes, sir. And here we are. It's um four something AM. Our start time is 4.50 because I rolled, had a bad lap time. Um, my lap time was 20 minutes. It took me 10 minutes to roll it over, so I'm gonna say my lap time was gonna be around 10 minutes, and the leader was like 11 and a half, so we were doing good till we weren't. We're about to head up to the starting line. All right, here we are at the starting line. It's rock and roll, Hoobup, it's rock and roll. Yeah. <laughs> we got a basic rundown on what's going on. I think they're starting us every couple minutes apart, um, so that's, that's good, give a little gap. Uh, it sprinkled a little bit of rain last night, so there shouldn't be any any uh, dust. Should be a good time. You got your co-pilot. Finally. Yes, sir. Right on. Welcome. Thank you. Center. Hit the red and white, the arrows. Right, take the gloves off because it's going to act up. Well, ain't gonna 
catch nobody like that. I gotta get that thing to center and and and, and zoom in. <laughs> yeah, that was a good start. Yeah, it, see if it'll zoom in more. It needs to be as far in as it'll go. Ah, uh, that's all it's got then. Piece of shit. Probably have to use hand signals to... Oh, shit! What the hell was that? Broke that bolt off, that's what it did. Just now getting started, we're only going to mile in. All right, here we are, pit one. Um, clipped a light bar on a tree, broke a mount. It's still, it's still there. It's still there. But I, I'm a little worried if it's gonna last. I had to check some bolts, stuff like that. Had some comms issues. Forgot my Loctite, so I had to use uh, super glue. And um, the, the navigator doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah, we missed a turn in the first, like, the first 500 feet we missed a turn. The Garmin was doing circles. And we missed a few other turns, kind of from overshooting them, but we're, we're making it. We're making it. We're having a good time. So, uh, on to the next stage is 76 miles. That one was, what was that, about 60-something? Yeah, 60. All right, so, yeah, we're seeing uh, this little pit area. You can drop gas with them. They'll bring it to you. You give them a little bit of money and they'll fill your can back up because this guy goes to pit four. Um, hopefully we make it there. The next pit, pit two, is lunch. So that'll be a good time. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and we're off. Let's go. see a photo <laughs> all right so we had to pull over quick little bathroom and drink break we swapped helmets because <laughs> the mic microphone we put in this one doesn't work so i couldn't hear him and then he's using my helmet and uh, the volume didn't work or something. And I've got the same setup in numerous machines. So I have an audio problem. So he's, it's, it's all hand signals now. Can't talk to nobody. <laughs> Can't hear no music. It really makes for a long day. But stop and go to water and a bathroom break and get a snack. 
And um, I don't know if you can see. Those are all mosquitoes flying around. Like they're just shy of going to carry us away. <laughs> they're everywhere. There are more bugs up here than anywhere I've ever been in my life. <laughs> you sit there on the phone, you you can, the people's like, what's all them bugs doing over there? Yeah, so there we go. Off into um, about 42 miles left till check mark two. It's already a long day, but it doesn't help we start at 4 a.m. I'm having a great time. <laughs> <laughs> It is a good time, but true, the bugs are horrendous. All right, still cruising along. Almost ready to get to lunch. Run through the power lines. Hey, uh, no more bugs. Pretty cool Canadian view. Yeah. All right, we're at checkpoint two. Um, they got lunch here if you have the meal plan. There's a gas station, you get gas. Um, they carry gas for you, five gallons, to three different locations. Uh, I think it's one, three, and five. I think four and two stop at a gas station, so that's pretty cool. Um, get us a little bit of lunch. Really just kind of want to take a nap for about two hours. Didn't really sleep much last night. Um, yeah. Jack, how are you feeling? Hi, I'm having the best day ever. I'm always having a great day when I'm riding with you. But... <laughs> he said it's like a make-a-wish day. Yeah, make-a-wish day. A make-a-wish day. I slept in the bed of a raptor, woke up, sat in the passenger seat riding through Canada's best trails all day. Having a lovely day. They are great trails. Um, my make-a-wish is I need to go to sleep. Uh, that's... <laughs> I'm like, wish we're gonna keep on trucking. Um, yeah, we'll show you the can am right quick. Here it is, all holding strong. FX tires, wheels, everything's holding up good. Uh, when I rolled yesterday, kind of put a bend in the spare tire rack. I'm really amazed by this assault little basket and the bag. You can fit a lot of stuff in there. We got a chainsaw, jump box tool roll, AGM rope, couple batteries. And because it's a bag, it, it flexes, so it'll zip up, and it'll have a, you know, it'll be bulged up, but it's all zipped shut. So yeah, I'm pretty pumped on that. It holds way more than what I thought it would, honestly. Uh, yeah, that's it. It's all holding good. I'm gonna get on the road and Throw down some more miles or kilometers, or whatever you want to call them. Stop on the trail, take a quick little little restroom and water break, maybe a couple minutes. And uh, Jack, how many people do we see in the past hour? Zero. <laughs> no, we saw one. Oh, we, we saw a Pro R, right? The Pro R four seater stuck in the trees. He had to pull over and let us let us by. We went over a bridge that this 64 inch only had a little bit to spare. I don't know what he's going to do. He might have to take it swimming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah 64 inch machine is definitely the way to go here 
uh, I would advise some shock tuning because uh, it's rough. A lot of, um, you can see down there, it's just bouldery rocks and small boulders, but it's just it's just super rough, just beats, beats on you for, we've probably been, we're probably about halfway now. We still got that much more. <laughs> and every time you stop, it's like, it's like the bugs, like the horse flies and the, ends, and the uh, mosquitoes. Yeah. They're like, oh, fresh meat. And they come swarming in like, holy cow. <laughs> Jack said, they're like, oh, go get him, boys. Here he is. <laughs> so, yeah, if you're coming up here to this, 64-inch machine, some shock tuning, and you need to bring a bucket of bug spray and brush that stuff on like you're painting a wall. <laughs> Because these bugs up here are insane. The only place I've ever been where you stop and mosquitoes start swarming the machine. Unreal. But a good time. Checkpoint three. Jack, what do you think? Oh, bloody lovely. Bloody lovely. Bloody lovely. <laughs> he said there's like a make a wish. I'm making a wish for a bed right now. <laughs> got the got the checkpoint guys and the fuel guys here. Hanging out. You give them you give them your gas can and they'll bring it to the checkpoints. Only five gallons, that's all you get. But I probably only used about three gallons on that section. All right. Number four is going about 70 miles. I think I'm more enthusiastic than you are. Well, it's just rough. <laughs> it's fun, but it's rough. Maybe we'll see some wildlife or something like that. Yeah. Kind of brighten the day. Right, here we go. Stage number four. And then there's only number five, and then it's done. So that's a good... <laughs> So we're about 35 miles into stage four. Um, Just put my perfume on. <laughs> Jack's doing the bug spray because every time we stop, we get swarmed by bugs. <laughs> Don't blame the bugs that are bad here. But uh, k &M's doing good. It's, of course, covered in mud. I didn't realize that Canada has so many lakes and ponds everywhere there's water uh and evidently there's lots of beavers that cause the dams to make this water so canada has a lot of a lot of groundwater evidently yeah we'll finish out this stage and go to stage five and then the finish line that's the goal let me go ahead and tell you it's a long time to be sitting in a machine we've been sitting in this thing for about 13 hours now and my head hurts more than anything because we're only rolling on about three hours of sleep. <laughs> Why? Just couldn't fall asleep. We're excited. What, what's your dinner here? Here we have beef jerky and cheese. Okay. Hubert slowly converted me into a redneck. <laughs> I'm very happy about it. A British redneck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the 
lang wala si ka. We made it to the last checkpoint. It's got 30 minutes before cutoff, so we're gonna make the home stretch now. Jack, how you feeling? Oh, I love that. Tremendous drive. <laughs> Tremendous drive, he said. Big shout out to the fuel guys, getting us fueled up. Uh, that one was fun. That was a lot of gravel roads, a little bit of technical stuff. Um, I don't even know what to expect on this, this next one. That one, you needed a boat for some of the water crossings. to the last checkpoint before 11 so we could keep going to the finish line <laughs> that was like 65 miles away <laughs> uh, we're going on nearly two hours and we've only been 20 miles because all the trails look like that they go on and off roads and they go on these trails. Skinny, tight, trees falling down, brush. If you come here, you better not worry about the body work on your machine because you're going to scratch it up. Some of these trails looks like they just tied a GPS to a billy goat's collar <laughs> and just turned them loose. Because literally, look, don't, don't look like anything's been through there except for a billy goat. So. On we go. Let's get it. Let's get it. <laughs> this is the man. Gotta get the jump done.
whole crew to find you. Oh, really? Yeah, you all right? I'm going to go message them now. Can you hang in here for a few yeah, minutes? Yeah, you didn't have my in reach. It should have been pinging. I didn't. I couldn't find you on the, uh, I couldn't find you on the, the app either, the tracking app. Oh, okay. Anyways, but you're okay. Oh, yeah, we're fine. Did you come across the other guy that's missing? No. And a can am? And a guy from Jersey? No, uh, we, uh, we hadn't seen anyone since the last checkpoint. Okay. Nope. So basically, you did the last checkpoint. We had the last five, checkpoint. Took everything to, to 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 the book, and you're yeah. You didn't see anyone. No. Not okay. between there and here. Got it. Got to the last checkpoint. We left about. Uh, we left. I'm gonna message my guys. I'll be right back. Okay. All right. So here we are. The morning after. We went to a wards, I uh, had some breakfast. They had a pressure washer, so I hosed it off because I'm leaving this can this Canadian dirt up here. <laughs> I don't need it. Um, Jack, what's your two cents on this whole event? Oh, it was excellent, really excellent. I think we went a bit too conservative though for the first four stages. On the, uh, the fifth stage, we had to make a time check, so uh, I experienced a little bit of hoop karna. Hoop karna. <laughs> yeah, really turned it on, uh, that was exciting. But no, excellent event. Long and tiring. Though. Long and tiring, yeah. So we we basically timed out. We finished in 23 hours, and the cutoff is 21 hours. Um, so they didn't take our GPS. They didn't check our tracks. I would venture to say our tracks missed less things than most. Um, it's a whole point system, so I don't know. Speaking to a lot of the people afterwards at the event, uh, they were saying that they were going super fast, not really bothered too much about the checkpoints, but then again, those guys didn't win any awards today, so who knows if that's the correct method, but maybe how, we should have had a happy medium between uh, sticking... How, how fast was that four-seater on the road, you said? I uh, spoke to one guy, he had a, a four-seat, uh, I think it was a Turbo S, Polaris, completely stock. Uh, he got stuck a couple of times as well, so he did it in 16 hours, so... Uh, Seven hours faster than us. I suspect he was going very fast on the, uh, the road sections. They they definitely advise us to kind of stick within the speed limits. Uh, and I'm not saying you can't do it. Uh, we probably, I'm just too conservative. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to tear stuff up. Ride safe. Yeah, I'm trying to ride safe. On the trails, uh, probably could have sped up a little bit. On the roads, could have sped up a lot, but trying to stay safe on that. Um, so yeah, overall it's a good time. Are we coming back next year? All depends on schedule. If the schedule doesn't allow, that's fine. <laughs> if the schedule does allow, I might find something else to do. Hey, and next year we'll have a comm system that works. Yeah, our, our intercom's acted up. His speak, his um, microphone didn't work, so I couldn't hear him. And then the volume was down. I don't know. Um, Richard, I need help with that because something was acting funny. Uh, but either way, that's a, a Dakar rally good time i definitely advise you to come check it out um it's not a race but it is a race uh you only have 21 hours to go 514 kilometers which is roughly 320 miles uh and there's some tight trails like super tight trails like literally they just walked with a gps and says that looks like a good spot um so yeah if you're going to come here be ready to do fast pit stops not a lot of stops if you want to win we did utv gold class which is the hardest and they have a silver equal mileage but a little bit easier and then they have a bronze they have teams they have solos solo means it's one person one machine that's it um you would think solo is like jack and me in this machine that's all no solo is one person so you have that uh, and then they have bikes they have argo class i didn't see any argos out there ain't no way an argo is making that in 16 hours 21 hours 48 hours ain't no way um then they have bikes and different versions of bikes but all silver gold bronze uh team and solo so you want to check it out look up look up the dakar rally it's here in canada good times now it's time to get back to the strong land and start building all right load it up ready to roll out uh, the dakar rally they give you an attendee badge for signing up um, I'll take that that's good 
we did finish just outside the time frame. So technically we didn't finish, but we did complete the course. So until next time.